I'm Lasse Clausen with Tech Berlin, and I'm here with Jonathan Ross Friedman from Kano. Uh, thanks a lot for coming. Thank you for inviting me. And uh, please share with us what is Kano and uh, how did you guys start it? So, at Kano, we want to build a world where anyone, anywhere, can make and play with technology and shape the world around them. And the way we started was by getting a challenge from a, from a six-year-old uh, who happens to be the son of my, of my co-founder. And, and he basically saw a computer board, a single board hardware. And we asked him, what does he want to do with it? And he said, well, I'd love to build my own computer, but it needs to be simple and fun like Lego so I can make it myself and no one needs to teach me. Well, and, and we basically took that challenge and, and we've developed the product. And our first product is, it's a computer. It's a computer kit that anyone can make you put together like Lego, you plug it into a display, and then out of the box, after putting it together, you start coding your own art, your own games, you build castle in Minecraft with code, and then the most exciting part, you get to share all these things on our social network with a global community of young creators where we've already generated over six million lines of code of over 3,000 projects created by young people all over the world. And that's, that's the world we, we are trying to, to empower. It's amazing. So I really like the analogy, if I, if I can summarize. So it's basically building a computer is as easy as assembling Lego, right? And so it's kind of like that play. And you're focusing specifically on kids? We're focusing on beginners. And obviously, kids and young people represent a big portion of, of that audience as beginners. But, you know, we've seen reactions that were amazing from parents. We have customers above the age of 70 in some places in the world. You know, we have a, uh, there's a company in Switzerland that bought hundreds of, of these computer kits so they can teach adults how to code uh, a computer, right? And, and, and they're 60 plus years old, they're not kids. So, so it's really for anyone who wants to be, who is curious about technology and wants to use technology as a form of creation rather than a form of consumption. And we look at them and we call them the beginners. And kids and young people are, are, are definitely a big part of that. Yeah, I think it's uh, probably a magic formula for product design. If you design something easy enough for kids to use, you find that a lot of people end up loving it too. I think that's a great insight and, you know, and also people give different meaning to different products. So when you go to a 70 year old and, and you see how they use the iPad, it means one thing for them. When you go to the kids, it means another thing for them. And we're trying to build this sort of experience that is fun, simple, affordable, but has this premium experience that people can say, wow, this is something I'd like to play with. Is it uh, so? Is it more for me to sort of, you know, play around with hardware and get some experience of assembling, semi-assembling, you know, my computer? Or is there also a software component to it where I can, you know, where it makes software more accessible to me? It's about taking hardware and software and creating these, let's call them packages that anyone can pl make and play with. And some of them is hardware related, like putting the computer together until it gets to, to this form. And, and in some cases it's, taking art and creating an application that we have called Make Art, where anyone can make art with code, not just draw art. And then the things you can do are just fantastic. Or for instance, take the command line and the terminal and turn it into a text adventure and show that you can learn about the command line through storytelling rather than you know, just putting code into it and, 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 and see how, what it does. So we're trying to really create experiences through hardware and software and make them simple, fun, with a premium experience and, and really make sure that everyone feel like it's, it's a wow experience and not just something they have to do. So that sounds like, it sounds like a wonderful and very ambitious uh, product. And so how, how is the team structured? Is it all sort of in-house? Is it all your team? How large is it? Do you open source some part of it? So we, we're using a lot of, um, you know, we're using, we're leveraging existing technologies, right? We built our first product on top of the Raspberry Pi hardware. Uh, we've used Linux as our operating system, so we built on top of Linux Debian. Um, and you know, we, we really love working with the outside resources that are available today. Uh, of course, in order to produce and uh, to, to design, develop, make and sell our own product, uh, you know, there needs to be a very diversified team. So our team at the moment is about 40 people, majority of us based in, in our London headquarters, but you know, we also have a small team in China. Uh, and the team is very diverse 
diversified. You know, we have designers, we have content developers, we have software engineers, web developers, we have uh, social media marketing, we have uh, customer support, we have operations analysts, we have management, finance, and all the things you need at a company. So it's a, it's a very diverse team. And what's really exciting being in London, um, you know, and this is something that really, you know, really important for me to stress is, is that, you know, London is sitting at the center of the world. Now, not everyone can come and work in London, but we as a company are very committed to building a highly capable international team. We already have today 70 nationalities represented on our team. That is an extraordinary thing that makes us really proud, and we're inviting more and more people you know, to join us, not because of their nationality, but it just happens, because it's part of the DNA of the company. You know, I'm Israeli, one of my co-founders is British, and another one is American. Our first employee was Spanish. So that DNA of multicultural, multinational team is in the building, and I'm, you know, I'm reaching out and inviting everyone to think if London is a place they would like to, to live and work, and if yes, definitely reach out to me and, and see if there is, a, there is a space for you in this uh, long, fantastic journey with Kano. Okay, so growing team, so if people want to work with them, is there, if, you know, if I can't move to London or if I can't, you know, maybe on the side, is there another way I can contribute to the project? Yeah, so we are now starting to work on kind of localization efforts and making sure that other people can take our software packages and our operating system and make it relevant and available for local audiences. You know, we know we have many customers in, in non-English speaking countries like Germany, France, Spain, Italy and beyond. So absolutely, you know, reach out to us and tell us how you can help. Uh, and probably it's going to be related to localization, but many, may, maybe other different things that I, 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 I cannot come up with at the moment. So I remember there was an initiative which was sort of a computer for every kid in the world. It was supposed to be a $100 computer. The one laptop per child. Right, that initiative, thanks. Um, so, and since I'm not too much in the market, but I haven't really heard anything about it anymore. So it looks like maybe you, through a different way, you've found a way of actually, you know, um, making that their vision also reality. Is there, are you working with these guys? Have you, have you guys met? Is there sort of maybe a collabor collaboration or are you completely independent from them? So we, we, we're not working with them, but we have a really great relationship with the founder, with Nicolas Negroponte of One Laptop Per Child. He's a big supporter and, 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 and he loves what we're doing. And you know, it's always great to get his input and advice following his experience with La One Laptop Per Child. I think what we're trying to do is very different from the One Laptop Per Child. We're not putting ourselves at the race of of the race, what, what some people call the race to the bottom. This is not about, Kano is not about making and selling a cheap computer. We're trying to empower a new creative generation to make and play with technology so they can shape the world around them. And we're trying to do it by using computing and using DIY and simple and fun tools that feels like Lego, but it's actually technology. Today, it's a computer. In the future, it might be different products. I'm not going to share what they are, but there's going to be more products. It's not just going to be a computer and that's the only thing we do. This is not the race we're playing. We're playing a different race. Um, and, and, and it's an exciting one because there are hundreds of millions of young people and beginners around the world who are just eager to build things and, and make things and not just you know, playing games on an iPad. And that's, that's kind of the opportunity we're tapping. So it, I kind of saw like a similar theme maybe to, to Tech Open Air, which tries to sort of converge technology, music, art, and science. And, um, and it would be interesting to hear your thoughts on how that's worked for your company. Because when you were talking about your team, the background seemed, or the team composition is very, very diverse, right? And sort of how, you know, your experience with when you have a team that's very diverse, not just in terms of nationalities, but also in their skills and what they do and how, um, you know, if you have any experience, how that works in practice and if there's any frictions and how you can come, kind of overcome that. Look, developing, recruiting, building and, 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 and retaining a happy team is one of the most difficult, probably the most difficult thing. Uh, I think when people start companies, they often feel like, I have such an amazing product idea. Uh, but then once you've done the product, there's actually a company to build and companies people and Kano is people in a way. Um, and we spend a lot of time making sure that people are excited, passionate, 
And sometimes we make mistakes, either in people that don't feed the culture we're building, and sometimes other people make mistakes. We're trying to bring people that we know can be committed, uh, can show empathy and be part of the team and have fun. Um, and yeah, it's challenging. And it's, it's, it, it has nothing to do with the, the multinationalism of the company. It got everything to do with the fact that we're talking about people. Um, and we're learning. We're learning how to build a company. Uh, we're developing people from within and not just bringing people from outside to do important and managerial roles in the company. Uh, it's exciting. It's difficult. Uh, it requires day in, day out to be you know, very committed to wanting other people to succeed and making sure that everyone you know are kind of going towards the same goal the same north star and yeah if i i'm not going to sit here and say it's easy it's probably the most difficult thing i've i've personally have done in my life and it's only getting more difficult as companies grow and we are no different in that respect thank you so much for sharing uh, your experience with us uh, jonathan from cano thank you